Hey everyone, welcome to Skillcap's ultimate guide to countering Zed. We pick Zed since he has one of the highest ban rates in low elay and just sucks to lane against especially if you're not very experienced in the mid lane. He's a champion that just doesn't feel fair to play against unless you really know what you're doing, which is why he gets banned so often. This is an experimental content type where we rounded a mix of our website subscribers and random mid lane mains from a college campus in Austin, Texas, totaling to 50 players total. We questioned them about why it sucks to meet a Zed, and then we recorded them laning versus our challenger mid lane experts here at Skillcapped to see how they did. In between our challengers stomping these bronze to diamond players, we would jump into a call and tell them what to do differently. We saw huge results in their success when laning versus Zed, and our challenger player Hector even got solo killed by a gold player. So not only have we put our tips to the test, but this research also let us know precisely what players don't know when laning against Zed in the first place, which is why this guide is 20 minutes long. It's comprehensive. You'll also hear different voices during this guide since we compiled this counter course from our website, which is separated into six chapters. Chapter one, knowing your enemy. Zed's W, Living Shadow, allows him to send out, you guessed it, a shadow. You can use it once to swap to it as a gap closer. It also mimics every ability that he casts, allowing him to throw out two shurikens and two shadow slashes. Do you know what the cooldown of this ability is? The answer is 22 seconds. Knowing the cooldown is vital to beating Zed, which we'll talk more about later in this guide. It also has a deceptively high range of 650, which is 100 higher than the average mage's auto attack. Zed's Razor Shuriken is his Q ability. This is what he skills up first and where a huge portion of the damage comes from. That being said, it has a key weakness, which is that it does 40% less damage on enemies hit beyond the first. When Zed throws out his Shuriken, you want to position yourself so that a minion is in front of you. This way, if it does land, you will take significantly less damage. Zed's E, Shadow Slash, is his secondary damaging ability. It also applies a slow, but only when it lands from his shadow, not from Zed himself. This slow can help him set up landing his shurikens after, a devastating combo that you'll be learning exactly how to defend against. Zed's R, Death Mark, is often what he uses to all in. He disappears for a brief moment before appearing behind the target, leaving a shadow in his original position. Then, for the next 3 seconds, it stores a percentage of all damage Zed does, before detonating at the end. There are specific ways to counter this frustrating ability, which we'll be covering in detail later on in this guide, so stay tuned. And finally, we have Zed's passive. This enables Zed's melee attacks to deal bonus magic damage when the target is at 50% or lower health. Now that you're equipped with the basic knowledge of Zed's kit, it's time to jump into the next chapter as we learn how to counter Zed. Chapter 2. Beating Zed Before He Can Fight Back now who wouldn't want to win their lane against Zed in the first few minutes of the game? This is exactly what you're going to learn to do in this section of the guide. Zed's at his absolute weakest during levels 1 and 2, but to understand how to capitalize on this, we first need to know what Zed is trying to accomplish. At level 1, Zed will be trying to land a full damage Q on you. As we know, Zed's Q does 40% less damage against units hit beyond the first. He'll try to unlock the full potential of this ability by hitting you while you're unprotected by your minions. To counter this, you want to position yourself inside your minion wave, constantly having a minion between you and Zed. This way, when he tries to hit you with a shuriken, the minion in front of you will absorb 40% of the damage you'd otherwise take. Once Zed hits level 2, most players start to get scared, but this is a huge mistake. Zed doesn't really get any stronger at this point. This is because Zed needs to unlock all three of his abilities at level 3 in order to be an actual threat with his W-E-Q combo, something we'll be breaking down in detail later on in this guide. At level 2, he'll be missing one of the abilities needed to execute this combo. For example, if he takes Q and E at level 2, then he won't have his W to poke or engage. If he instead takes Q and W, then he won't have his E ability, resulting in him lacking a slow to set up his shurikens while doing significantly less damage. For these reasons, his goal will be the exact same as when he's level 1, land a full damage shuriken by hitting you when you're unprotected by your minions. Because of how weak he is levels 1 to 2, we have a very specific game plan of our own. 
First, when you enter the lane, you want to immediately start damaging the minions. Your goal is to stay ahead one minion of experience on Zed. Our next goal is to constantly harass Zed whenever he moves in range of our auto attacks and abilities. Remember, you'll be positioning yourself so a minion is constantly between you and Zed, reducing the damage of his Q. With you landing abilities, combined with auto attacks, there's no way Zed can actually win any trades against you. For example, let's take a look at how an Orianna implements this strategy to absolutely demolish a gold Zed the second he gets into lane. As Zed moves up to kill the melee minions on the first wave, Orianna positions herself with a minion between her and Zed. As Zed gets in range of her, Orianna goes aggressive, putting Zed down to almost half health and the lanes just started. During this phase, we also want to take advantage of Zed's Q being on cooldown for 6 seconds, as this is his only way of fighting back. Again, let's watch this Orianna implement this simple strategy. Zed uses his Q, so Orianna immediately looks to land some poke. She then goes back to positioning herself behind a minion as Zed's Q is back off cooldown. By following this game plan, you'll get Zed low on health, while building up a minion advantage that will cause a slow push towards Zed's tower. This will allow you to hit level 2 before him, and then level 3 before him. When executed correctly, this will slow push a big wave crashing into Zed's tower. Now this is when you'll put the nail in the coffin. With Zed being distracted with having to last hit so many minions under his tower, and with you having a large minion wave to protect you, you can rain down harass on him outside of the tower's range. As you can see, by executing this simple and straightforward game plan, Zed will be extremely low on health, have no more health pods, and you've now won your lane in the first few minutes of the game. Chapter 3, when Zed fights back. Now, this next phase is where 90% of players lose lane to Zed, so listen up. When Zed hits level 3, he unlocks his devastatingly powerful WEQ combo. Everything at this point relies on your ability to understand this combo, how to defend against it, and how to take advantage of its weaknesses. Let's start with how it works. Zed casts his W, and then activates his E, which does damage and applies a slow. He'll then follow this up with his Q ability, trying to land both shurikens on you. His goal is to hit you with this combo over and over again until you're low enough on health that he can swap to his shadow and all in you. To counter this, we have two main goals of our own. First, as mentioned earlier, we want to be positioned with a minion between us and the shurikens. This way, we take 40% reduced damage. Second, we need to avoid being hit by both Shuriken when Zed uses his WEQ combo. If he lands both of his Qs, it will activate his Electrocute rune. If you dodge one of the two Qs, you will deny his Electrocute proc. Since his Living Shadow is going to be much closer to you than Zed is, you want to focus on dodging Zed's Q and not the Shadow Q. To avoid tanking both Qs, you'll essentially be looking to avoid two abilities at once, outranging Zed's own Q while sidestepping the Shadow Q. This favors moving diagonally, as you'll be creating distance while also sidestepping. It also gives you more time to quickly reposition if you see that Zed's Q is going to hit you. If you were to walk directly backwards, you're not sidestepping and lower your chance of dodging. Now, let's get into our own game plan to completely shut down Zed during this phase. It involves two main strategies. The first strategy is playing around his W ability, Living Shadow, which is on an extremely long cooldown of 22 seconds. When Zed uses this ability, the shadow will remain in place for 5 seconds, giving him the option of swapping to it. You do not want to make the very common mistake of standing near it as it can allow Zed to all in you. Instead, you want to wait for the shadow to expire, and then immediately turn on the aggression when it does. Since Zed doesn't have access to his crucial WEQ combo for 17 seconds once the shadow expires, he'll have no way to engage on you. This window essentially puts him back to being as weak as he was at levels 1 and 2, and you can punish him in the exact same way. The second strategy involves creating recall timings. I know this doesn't sound the most exciting, but through our research we actually found that over 90% of players lost lane due to not executing this potent tactic. Trust me, this is a huge deal and you need to master this. Over and over again, we saw how players' health bars would get chipped away from Zed's WEQ combo causing them to run out of sustain, setting them up to be easily all in. There's a simple trick you can use to completely shut down this tactic by Zed. It starts by first keeping track of how many potions you have left. Once you notice that you have one potion left, 
wait for Zed to use his WEQ combo. Then use your remaining potion while waiting for his shadow to expire and healing back up. Then, instead of using this timing window to harass him, use your abilities to push the wave fast. He won't be able to stop your push since his abilities will be on cooldown. Once the wave is pushed to his tower, we can recall, purchasing more items, getting back to full health, and stacking up on health potions. By pushing the wave, we give ourselves time to recall without losing any minions, and then we get back to lane with an item and sustain advantage while keeping ourselves out of Zed's all-in range. Before we get into the next chapter, I quickly want to mention that if you're not subscribed to our website, skillcap.com, then you are missing out. We've now released more than 800 guides, which we've spent hundreds of hours perfecting and curating into courses covering the most important topics to start climbing. We're so confident in our product, you can check out your predicted rank when using the long-term plan. If you don't hit that rank while actively using Skillcap, you'll be eligible for a full refund. So what are you waiting for? Sign up today to actually start climbing. Chapter 4. When Zed takes your lunch money. When Zed hits level 6, most players fall over the moment he uses ultimate, Death Mark. In this section, we're going to teach you the ins and outs of how Zed's ultimate works and how to counter it so that you'll no longer be left wondering why you died to Zed. We'll now break down Zed's attack and our defense, starting with Zed's attack. Zed's ultimate is not only a high damage source, but also a gap closer. It essentially works by appearing behind your champion, leaving a shadow at his previous location, which works exactly like his W ability, Living Shadow. This marks you for 3 seconds, leaving Zed with a window to land as much damage as possible during those 3 seconds, which we know primarily comes from his Q. Then, once the 3 seconds expires, the death mark will detonate, dealing substantial percent damage from the 3 second death mark timing, which increases the more points he puts into his ultimate. To deal maximum damage, Zed will be looking to land not just 2 Qs but 3 as he has his W and R shadows to work with to mimic his initial Q. To simplify, if he lands everything, you can just die 100 to 0 like this. On top of that, he can hop back to either of his shadows by pressing W or R again while the shadows are still up, making it really easy for him to disengage and dodge skill shots after with 2 shadows to choose from. Now we understand how Zed's ultimate works, let's test your mastery for countering Zed by watching three examples of his ult in action. While watching, try to identify why Zed is dealing higher or lower damage with each ultimate onto the Orianna. Alright, let's break each clip down and find out if you could spot the differences. In the first example, we saw Orianna survive Zed's all-in with relative ease. You may have picked up on how she survived this because it follows the same concept from Chapter 3 where we break down how to deal with Zed's WEQ combo. Orianna took way less damage because she dodged 2 out of 3 of Zed's keys. She was able to do this by positioning with the same movement techniques that we taught earlier, but this time, during his ultimate, your focus will now be on dodging Zed's shadow Q instead of his own Q, as he will now be in melee range thanks to the gap closing with his ultimate, with his living shadows being the furthest away and easiest to dodge. Now, if you don't have a dash to help with this, you may need to expend your flash if you feel like you'll die to tanking two or three of the Qs. In the second example, we saw Orianna explode to Zed's all-in. This was due to her tanking all three Qs, one from Zed, one from his W shadow, and the other from his ultimate shadow. As we know, Zed landing just two Qs can deal significant damage. If he lands all three, you're in serious trouble. In the third example, we saw Orianna take significantly less damage because two Qs passed three minions, which, as we know, deal 40% less damage on each Q. The takeaway here is that minions are still your best friends even when dealing with Zed's all-in with ultimate. Now we've truly broken down the importance of dealing with Zed's Q, next try to identify why Orianna's health ends up at two different amounts between these two examples.
So Zed landed the exact same combos with the same items against the Orianna, except in one example Orianna had a Seeker's Arm Guard, which you should have purchased by the time Zed hits level 6, and in the other example Orianna did not have it. 100% of the users from our research group not only were recalling at bad times leading to their death, but what they bought when they did recall often made them a free kill for Zed. Even if you dodge a Q or even two Qs, you can still get 100 to 0 if you're not itemizing correctly. For this reason, you'll want to rush early cloth armors into building a Seeker's Arm Guard if you're playing AP and then continue with your original build. If you're playing an AD champion, then go for cloth armor on your first base then continue with your standard build, converting that cloth armor into Ninja's Tabby later in the lane phase. When combining these defenses, such as itemizing correctly and proactively dodging Zed's Q on his ultimate, you should have your health looking more like this, and suddenly making Zed feel way less oppressive and overwhelming to deal with. Chapter 5. When Zed Hunts Your Teammates Now some of you may be thinking that you can deal with Zed in lane by playing defensive at the safety of your tower and survive, and instead that the real problem you have is Zed roaming and killing your teammates. Don't worry, this is one of the most common problems we noticed in players, and we're going to break down exactly how to stop this from happening. First, you need to understand what Zed's game plan is. If he's not able to kill you in lane due to you playing at the safety of your tower, then he's going to shove in the wave and gank a side lane instead. Even worse is the fact that there's a very common trap assassins create called the fake roam. They will push the wave, then pretend as if they're ganking a lane, hoping that you follow. If you do, they spring the trap and kill you. This means it's not really possible for you to follow Zed when he roams due to the threat of him setting up this trap. This is starting to look like we have no options. Hold on though, remember from earlier in this guide how when Zed's W is on cooldown after he uses his WEQ combo, we want to time our aggression? Well, instead of focusing on landing harass or trading with Zed during this time, we can hard shove the wave into Zed's tower instead. While Zed is stuck picking up the wave at the tower, this can give us our own opportunity to roam, get wards down, or create the recall timing we mentioned before to stay high on health during the entire laning phase. With all these benefits it gives us, it crucially keeps Zed pinned down at his tower and unable to roam and impact the map. If you're not able to take full control over the wave due to being camped by the jungler or falling behind from earlier mistakes, then you need to rely on vision to reduce the chances of Zed's roaming being successful. To do this, it's important to keep up wards on both sides of our lane. This will help track Zed when he moves to roam and allow us to backping our teammates and let them know he's coming. Sometimes though, the enemy might have control wards, or a jungler with a sweeping lens that's denying our ability to get meaningful vision. In this case, put your ward directly in the center of the lane. This way, when Zed pushes the wave and looks to roam, we can see which direction he's headed and backping our teammates on that side of the map. It's through these two strategies, pushing in the wave and pinning him down, or placing wards to track him when he roams, we're able to counter Zed's roaming. Great, now you're armed with everything needed to shut down Zed. Let's put it all together to see exactly what it should look like in your games. Zed's at his weakest levels 1 to 2. We want to get as much of a lead as we can at this moment to help us survive the latest levels. To achieve this, when we enter the lane we want to immediately damage the minions to get a 1 minion advantage. Our next goal is to constantly harass Zed whenever he moves in range of our auto attacks and abilities. Remember, you'll be positioning yourself with a minion between you and Zed, reducing the damage of his Q and winning you every trade. By doing this, you'll get Zed low on health while building up a minion advantage that will cause a slow push towards Zed's tower. This will allow you to get level 2 before him and then level 3 before him. This will culminate with a big wave crashing into Zed's tower. This is when you rain down harass on him as he tries to last hit the wave. Now you will both acquire a health lead and a CS lead heading into level 3. Once Zed is level 3 he will be looking to land his WEQ combo. Our goal is to make sure that he doesn't land 2 Qs when he does this as it will activate his electric Q for more damage. We achieve this by focusing on dodging Zed's Q, not his shadow's Q since it's further away and gives us more time to dodge by moving diagonally away from him. We then wait 5 seconds for his shadow to expire so that we can swap to it. Once it's expired, we have 17 seconds to turn on the aggression, landing poke and harass again. It's at this point that Zed will crumble under the pressure. 
With the damage we landed in the earlier levels, he will run out of health pods and desperately need to recall. This will result in him losing a wave if he recalls or you killing him if he stays. Either way, you've now won your lane. The best part is, even if you somehow mess this up, you can always use a strategy of hard pushing the wave once his W is on cooldown. If you notice that you only have one potion left, while Zed is still healthy and has potions of his own, wait for him to use his W-EQ combo and the shadow to expire. Hard push the wave and during this time, he cannot fight back with his abilities as they are on cooldown. Once the wave is pushed to his tower, we can recall, purchasing more items, getting back to full health and stacking up on health potions. By successfully executing this early game strategy, you will have an important gold and experience lead on Zed that will make laning against him once he's level 6 much easier. Once you're level 6, Zed becomes more dangerous, but you now know how to build early armor against him. With the early gold lead that we've acquired, translating into less attack damage for him and more armor for us, his WEQ combo doesn't hit us as hard and he can no longer 100 to 0 us. Even if he does ult, we all know to dodge his Qs and he will do very little damage. During this phase, we follow the same trading patterns. Wait for Zed to use his WEQ combo and then wait for the shadow to expire after 5 seconds and then we have a 17 second timing window. We can use this to go aggressive on Zed to poke him down and win trades. Or we can take the safer route of pushing the wave to pin him into his tower, preventing him from roaming and giving us our opportunity to roam or create a recall timing to stay healthy, purchase more items, and refill our sustain. Okay, so that brings us to the end of our first skill cap counter guide. What did you think of this content type? Would you like us to do more? If so, what champion should we cover next? Also, be sure to check out our website to sign up and start climbing the ranks today. Thanks for watching, and we will see you in the next video.